When I started making this video, I thought it was just going to be 4 minutes of me mumbling about how Electrodynamics was the best main level and about how Geometrical Dominator can eat a dick. But when I got bored of steering at the same level over and over, I actually started playing the other ones and I realised, oh, I don't actually know about this. As I started playing more and more levels, I took notice that finding out what the best main level was was actually fucking impossible. So what's the best one? Name any single level ever and you'll have the correct answer. Geometrical Dominator is only the worst one by default. If it didn't have the memory part in it, it would probably be viewed as a pretty decent mid-tier level. All of the main levels have the exact same purpose to serve. That purpose of course being introducing new and old players to the new features that every single new update has. So all of these tier lists are pretty much redundant because every single level does their job of being an update opener perfectly fine. So technically every single level belongs in C tier and every single shift from that point is only because of biases from the player. Which which makes perfect sense because it's literally impossible to have an unbiased tier list. Those things are only created to make people angry at each other. Solid S tier. So the only real way to accurately judge the quality of the level I reckon is to get every single one of them and find every single small aspect of them and obsess over them to the point that everyone watching starts to get uncomfortable. But if I'm an expert about anything, it's obsessing over small things that realistically don't fucking matter at all. So without any further delay, all you sluts better buckle your fuckles cause it's time for some serious level analysis. Alright, we're starting off small here. For all of you who justifiably don't know what swag routes are, they're completely unintentional holes that creators leave in their levels by accident that are way harder, but are way cooler. These flex holes are completely superfluous, but that doesn't stop them from making whoever goes through them from temporarily becoming the coolest person on earth. You may be surprised how many of these in Rob top levels are just hanging around. If I include the challenge in the set of levels, it would win by a landslide, because that level is nothing but swag routes. There's quite a few I'll be grazing over, so here's the highlights. Let's start with the smaller ones. In the mini or faux pas and fear of everything, there's a few opportunities to slip past the four-way spiked blocks. Pretty cool. You probably know the one in Electromat Adventures. I will never not do this. If you ever catch me in a ship form in here, just know that my account's been hijacked. This isn't a really big one, but in the hexagon force, you can do this orb skip near the end. Try that one on for size if you've ever been chucked into a sensory deprivation tank. Theory of Everything 2 is a pretty famous one, where you can pull off these goofy magic moves and skip the cube portal. Unfortunately, you die right at the end, so that was a fucking waste of time. Rob's a real asshole for not letting us have that one. There's another one of these in Geometrical Dominator, which ends up in similar results. Deadlocks is quite a few of these. First, you can jump over these pads before the drop. No one ever mentioned this one, but it's probably the easiest one out of all of them. The next ones on the other hand need a fucking wizard to pull off. You better look closely at them because there's three in quick succession right after each other. In the ship section, it's possible to get the second coin without even getting the key. It's incredibly rare, but just know it does happen. Right after that, you can go under the ball portal by pulling off the same wizard shit from Theory of Everything 2. But there's another one even after that. You can also go under the UFO portal. Those are the smaller ones, but that's not all of them. You have your flexes, and then you've got your big boys. There's three of them in the roll top levels. The first one's in Theory of Everything 2. I showed this one off in the Sweet Dude video. If you hold down the right time, you can just barely scrape right under the 0.5x speed portal. If you're fast enough, you can blast your supersonic ass and save about 2 seconds. This next one is so broken that Rob Top literally took it out of the game one week after the update came out. In Deadlocks, you used to be able to completely skip the wave portal and do the entire thing in the cube. But unfortunately, Rob Top came down with a case of Big Gay and changed it. This last one isn't as broken as that one but it's way cooler. In Finger Dash, you can phase right through the fucking wall and go through the rest of the level as a mini. You can even do the wave if you're a fucking superhero. This one was pretty close, but I gotta give this point to Deadlock just for the sheer variety of skips. Bravo to Rob for never fixing his levels. These are basically the swag routes if they are intentional. Which basically means they're lame as fuck, but that doesn't mean that there are some that are less lame than others. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the highlights. This one's a classic beginner's trap, Stereo Madness Coin 3. This coin actually used to be harder than it even is now, but it got nerfed to 1.9. Fuck that shit, buff it even more. How about that whenever you go through the path, it goes through a teleport portal which immediately takes you to OP straight flying. Try to get the third coin now, motherfucker. Can't let go, third coin. Great coin. I always feel like a chair going through the block right after fucking it up 30 times in a row. Alright, jump a second coin. Fuck this coin. Same with time machine, second coin. Fuck this coin too. Cycles, third coin. This is like if Rob Top accidentally made a swag route and turned it into a real coin. I love climbing on the ceiling. Please do it more, please. Every single coin from Clutterfunk. Fuck whoever scum bastards put these here. I never want to touch these again. Who thought it was a good idea to force the player to do a blind timing and off screen jump simultaneously? Just fuck Clutterfunk in general. Fuck that level. Every single coin from Theory of Everything. These are just straightforward good coins. These make sense. Hit a specific pattern, hit a swag route, hit the patch secret way for 1.4. Good job. Coin 1 from Electroman Adventures. Nothing really to say here, I thought it was just cute to make us break the bricks. Blast processing first coin. I don't really see dual wave coins too often, so I'm just glad they're here. Theory of Everything 2 second coin. I really like watching dummies die to it. Coins 1 and 3 from Deadlock make beating the level much, much harder, but it's really easy to master and it feels great when you get it all in one run. And finally, Finger Dash, Coin 3. This is one of the two things that the pickup trigger is used for. If it's not a mini game, it's always one of these things, and Finger Dash was the true OG. This one was also kind of close, but I gotta give this to Thea of everything. With how it was only the level where all three coins were consistently good. It sounds a bit weird giving one of the most forgettable levels in the entire game this point. Yeah, I guess we learn something new every day. Every single Rob Top level is literally the first level of every update ever made. It is important to acknowledge how influential each level of the game affected the following updates to come, while basically measuring which one caused least fuck ups. Starting with Stereo Madness, it made levels uh, exist, I guess, so good on Rob for making that one happen. Next one is Time Machine. This level eased people towards triple spikes, which at the time was an easy way to make something really hard. Back in 1.0, they were just chucked in every impossible level because straight flying wasn't invented yet. I feel like in 1.1, with the release of Time Machine, Rob Top giving the 4 endorsement to lazily slapping triple spikes everywhere made everyone more comfortable seeing them often. Third is Club Step. Back in 1.5, demons existed, but when 1.6 came out, the community was really encouraged to make more demon levels. When Club Step was released, it was by far the single hardest Rob Top level ever released, and it took people newer to the game, or even accustomed, thousands of attempts to beat it. I have a theory that without Club Step, the general player base wouldn't have been as skilled as they are today. The average player today is generally pretty good. I'm not even predominantly a player, and I can squirt out an insane demon in 800 attempts or so just fine. For most people back in early 1.6, they had to grind hard as shit to beat that fucking level, and they came out the experience as a giga chair with their new playing abilities. But there is a huge downside to this however. It also inspired many levels that came out at the time from tons of big creators. The problem with this was most of these were fucking shit. There were basically 90 seconds of black backgrounds and off screen jumps that got boring after like a uh, 2 seconds. Level number 4, Electrodynamics. Nothing special with this one, it just influenced a lot of good levels and I'm glad 1.7 had a surprisingly large amount of gems. Next up is Blast Processing. It was in charge of being the first 1.9 level ever, and with the task of being the standard for every single 1.9 level after that, it did a pretty good job at this. The 1.9 design style is one of the longest lasting styles of all time, and almost 7 years later it still isn't dated. The designs here aren't groundbreaking, but it serves as a great blank slate that other creators soon filled in with not only their reimaginings of the level, but the 1.9 design style that is less shitty than you would think for a style that's almost 7 years old. Lastly, Geometrical Dominator. This one isn't actually a positive influence at all. This level gave people the idea that they should start making memory levels again and they kept doing it for 3 fucking years. Congratulations Geometrical Dominator, 2.0 is all your fault. Brass Processing wins this one because Club Step probably made the Demons List a thing, and retroactively that made Killbot a thing. So it's disqualified.
I feel like this one's kind of impossible to answer because it's pretty difficult to give this answer objectively. You can rule out stiff turds like Clodderfunk and Geometrical Dominator, but apart from that it's pretty much everyone's game. I reckon most of you would pick something else, but I would probably grab Electrodynamics for this one. But being the first level ever to deal with speed portals, it integrates them pretty well and it's surprisingly easy to sight read despite the fast speed. It's also the single most intense level out of all the main ones, mostly because it's really fucking long. Also how it lets the new players get a long hold of the new 2 times speed portal before graduating to death. It's really intense but it lets the player breathe, a concept that most extreme demons seem to forget nowadays. Electrodynamics is long for a reason. The UFO and ship parts especially are pretty enjoyable when returning to them years later. So uh, too long, didn't watch, uh, good level. This one's pretty simple. Roll out every single level to the left of Electroman Adventures and to the right of Theory of Everything 2. In my opinion, the pre-1.5 Rob Top era was filled with nothing but incredibly basic and bland generic levels made to do nothing but give the dummies that filled the community back then something they'd chew on while they shit their pants. They didn't even include shit like background flashes. Alternatively, on the opposite end of the spectrum, everything in 2.0 and beyond was a time where standards and trends evolved fast as fuck and nobody could ever keep up with it. Besides Heinz, uh, apparently. But everyone that wasn't Heinz didn't fare so well. These levels are all instantly dated as nowadays GD Hamburger 556 from the recent section could come mosey on in and outdo deadlocks with their table scraps. Easily the best two levels in this category were two design levels. Electroman Adventures and Blast Processing. If you see any throwback levels released nowadays, literally every single one of them are either 1.6 or 1.9 design levels. But I'd do it to get this one again to Blast Processing, cleanly as Electroman Adventures was. It's not even fucking close to Blast Processing when it comes to representing its theme, or having vibrant colour or the smaller details. I'd do it to shout at these contrasting colours in the second wave section also. So, you did a good job blast processing. Finally, last one. Realistically, the true purpose of any Rob Toller was to give us filthy peasants representation of what the next 10 years of levels are going to look like before he updates again and the countdown is reset. Longevity and replayability is the best ability for a level to have ever, but it doesn't matter too much in the end when it comes to Robbo's levels. The real point of them is to give us an easy to digest and tasteful helping of all the new shit everyone's going to bitch about until the end of time. After playing them a trillion times over, I can say that a few stand above the others in terms of showing us what we're actually going to be staring at for the next few years. The first one of them being Clutterfunk. It's actually surprisingly good at introducing the mini function. It lets the player breathe, gives them a tour of the variety of game modes. That are uh, being three, because at the time there were only three game modes. It literally showed us everything the update had to offer, so uh, by default it ranks up there with one of the best in that aspect. Electrodynamics is also a contender here. As I said in the gameplay segment, the slow build-up was a great assistance for any new or returning players to throw the iPod touch across the room whenever they died at 63 again. As much as all of us flipped our shit while we played it, you can't say that by the end of it we didn't have perfect control over the speed changes. It trained us all the hard way, and for all that I would say it did a pretty good job. The last nomination being Hexagon Force, which shoved the duel down our throats and didn't let us fucking spit it out until we got it down. You've got both symmetrical and asymmetrical duels in here, the complete package. I would still have to give this one to Electrodynamics because as much as we didn't enjoy the progression to beating it, it sure did let us know what the fuck a speed was. You did good Rob, now please never fucking do that again. Alright, now that we've got all the points tallied up, let's check out the results. Hmm. If you look at them, you may have noticed that we don't have a conclusive winner. Uh, that's probably because I gave some of them swag points, but I'll ignore that for now. So, which is the best one? Uh, to be honest, just uh, pick one. Objectively, the best three are Electroman Adventures, Electrodynamics, and Blast Processing. Electrodynamics had the best gameplay, it was the best exposition level, and out of all of them on top of that, it also led to a lot of pretty good levels. So it's about fucking time that we all had a 1.7 comeback. Electroman Adventures didn't score a single winner on its own, 
but it had four nominations, which tells me it's a pretty good all-rounder when it comes to levels. It's the less popular, but way better cousin to Clubstep, and that really tells you all you need to know. Finally, Blast Processing. This is the only one out of Robbo's levels that hasn't aged the day. If I found this level in the 1.9 server in 2021, I would legitimately think nothing of it. I do think that he will never make a level as timeless or as influential, at least design-wise, as this again. So we got three winners. After all this pissing around, we finally have an accurate tier list. At least I can finally sleep at night now knowing that I didn't change a single person's opinion. There's probably at least one person that's strongly adamant that Polar Geist is the best one so I can't stop you from being wrong. Whichever your favourite one is, always know you can't have a wrong opinion. Unless it isn't one of these three, which in that case your opinion is fucking wrong. Alright kids, I've officially proven which opinions are the most base. Goodbye to all my Venezuelan anarchists watching at home. See you all in 60 days when I angrily ramble about Juniper's toenails for 23 minutes.